Well, hello, fellow humans and mole people and aliens, I think. I think there have been quite a few sightings of you guys. If you guys are listening to the podcast, great. I hope you're ready for some terrestrial chuckles. My name is Stefan Satani. I am the host of this lovely podcast, this gem of a pod named a comedy advice podcast. And I'm so happy you're here. Maybe not the mole people, but the humans and the aliens. You know what? We're going to have a big old party, a pod party. And this is an exciting episode. Guess what? Tom Papa on the podcast, everybody. I did it. This is going to be the last episode because I think I may have peaked. But no, it won't be. I'm definitely going to have a horrible downhill slide. But Tom Papa, one of my favorite comedians. I love his latest special. You're doing great. And his book, You're Doing Great, and other reasons to stay alive. He's also on the SiriusXM show, Netflix's What a Joke with Papa and Fortune. And he's also got his own podcast, Breaking Bread with Tom Papa. Hilarious comedian. And guess what? Phoenix, he's going to be at Stand Up Live July 15th through the 17th. And if you guys are not in Phoenix and you're like, oh, I want to see him, guess what? He's on tour. So go to TomPapa.com and you can see all his tour dates go see him. He's a hilarious comedian. And I just had a delightful conversation with this gentleman. Um, What else is going on? Oh, if you guys have not, please subscribe, leave a review, follow me on Instagram. You guys are my little treasures. And I I love to see those little reviews, the little subscriptions, those follows on Instagram, chat me, I just got a comment, somebody went to their first open mic, and this pod helped. And I was like, dude, I'm so glad. How did it help? And he was like, well, it was really humiliating and cringeworthy to hear your podcast. I was like, I can't be that bad. And I was like, well, thanks. So I'm glad to be inspiring all of you guys. This is amazing. Thank you so much. But seriously, thank you guys. And thank you to everybody that came out this weekend to my shows. I was hosting five shows at JP's Comedy Club and they were great. They were fantastic, great club, great owners. And the whole, there were like 15 different comedians and the headliner, Ron Jossel was awesome. I'm going to have him on the pod sometime, but it was just so cool. And guess what? If you guys missed that, I'm going to be doing a booked spot at the Bridge Improv Theater, August 1st. So get your tickets now. I have to figure out where you can get tickets, but get your tickets now. It's going to be a good time. I guess I'm doing stand up again. Here I am. And it's going to be clean comedy, clean old Steph, squeaky Steph. Well, no, that's like a dog toy. Squeaky clean Steph. There you go. Now we got it. Okay, so I don't have more more to say, except I love you guys. (laughs) Sorry, dropped a bomb on you, but I do. I love you guys so much. I'm on both knees. And I'm telling you, will you listen to me? Will you commit in sickness and in health? to just be like, Alexa, can you put on some comedy advice podcast? And I will love you till the day. I mean, even after I die, my voice will be there. That's kind of creepy, man. Maybe I can give this to my kids. My son will take this on. I don't know what his name is going to be. Artemis, perhaps Artemis Satani Hmm. will workshop it. But I am so happy. You guys give me so much joy, maybe a little more than my son. He's not real, but thank you guys so much. And here's the episode. Woo! Right. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of A Comedy Advice Podcast. My name is Stefan Satani, and joining me today, a very special guest. He's a hilarious comedian, radio and podcast host, author, bread maker. He's headlining at Stand Up Live July 15th through the 17th in Phoenix. He makes a killer sourdough, but he ain't sour, though. Everybody, please welcome Tom Papa. Hey, hey. That was a very faint clap. I feel like it should have been an uproarious uh, <laughs> yeah, clap. It's a zoom clap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the Zoom clap. It's even fainter <laughs> than the golf clap. Uh, but Tom, thank you so much for joining. I was going to ask, how is sure. everything going over there in uh, in LA? I know on June fifteenth they lifted a lot of the restrictions. Is it really wild yeah. or? Yeah. It, um. No, it's kind of funny. There's definitely like some PTSD where everybody's allowed to do whatever they want to do. Uh, but everybody's still walking around with their masks on. It's like they can't let go. It's like they 
they were trusting the science all this way. And now when the science says it's okay, they're like, I don't know, maybe not. <laughs> but uh, it definitely feels hopeful. And uh, I haven't been to the comedy store since then. So I'm anxious mm -hmm. to see, because we were doing, a, I think it was like 35% capacity up till now. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure exactly if, if they're packing them in yet or, uh, or if they're still limited. I'm not, I'm not totally sure. Oh, interesting. And, and I know with the family reunion tour, and I, I'm not sure if you've stopped necessarily doing stand up, but maybe decelerated a little bit as the, it, um, the pandemic was at its peak and everything. But have you seen as you've been touring or going to different places outside of California, the capacity is slowly inching towards 100%? Yeah, it is. I, I was I just returned to helium comedy during last year i went there like in july and it mm -hmm. was like one of the only clubs where uh it just felt like it was a cool place to do it and they were probably i don't know maybe 25 percent. like it was really not that many people and uh so like to return a year later and they're like oh, i think a little over 60 percent was good it felt like all right they're all like yeah and that's and that's where they haven't even lifted the the uh restrictions completely in portland but mm -hmm. um but yeah, like everywhere we go, like, it's so funny. I went to uh, Good Nights in North Carolina. And like the day I landed, they were allowed to open up completely. So they were literally adding more tables like as we wow. were as we were coming in. But you know, you can't do it overnight because they don't have the staff. They don't have the food. They don't have like, there's a mm. lot of other things that go into it rather, you know, you think it's just Oh, well, now 100% capacity, just let everybody in. But there's right. a lot more, you know, behind the scenes that they got to handle. Yeah, yeah. You can't be like, all right, these tables one, three, and five don't get to eat apps. And we're going <laughs> to... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no alcohol. Because as soon as people sit down, you know, they, it's all back to uh, demanding everything. Oh, I know. Yep, that's that's how it is. And yeah. um, your Phoenix dates, I'm also really excited about the 15th the, through the 17th of July. Yeah. Which... Uh, it gets a little hot here um, that time of year, but sure, sure. it's, uh, I was, <laughs> and I was also, I was reading your book, um, You're Doing Great, which uh, paired, it, it was a nice pairing with your Netflix special, which I'd love to talk about in a second, but absolutely phenomenal book. It reminded me of the first couple of chapters. And I think one of them in which you were talking about you growing up in New Jersey, your dad was a fan person where right. he didn't really believe in air conditioner. And uh, um, yeah. I had the experience where my wife and I, our AC broke last week. It was the hottest week of the year. I think it reached 122. Oof. Um, <laughs> and, I, and I was thinking of your words, because we tried the fans for one day and it was like, we're not fan people. We're, <laughs> yeah. we're get a hotel people while this gets fixed. That's what oh, is are. that what you did? You bailed out? <laughs> we did. <laughs> yeah. We did. I tried to be stoic about it, but we saw we have two little cats and they were just uh, lying like um like very sick lions in the savannah. <laughs> and I was just like, we gotta we gotta do something here. So Yeah, yeah, I know. I booked all these clubs. I just it was, you know, I didn't know where we were gonna be. I didn't know if we'd mm -hmm. have clubs open in LA or New York yet or what it was mm -hmm. gonna be. So any place that was still doing comedy where I could go and and just work out. So I don't care. I don't mind the heat so much. I'm here in LA and yeah, we, you know, we get pretty intense too. Not as uh -huh. intense as that, but, uh, but I was like, yeah, someone actually said something when I announced the tour dates that I'm coming to stand up live and they were like, you know, it, the end of July, who's your agent? <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> people, people think that we're uh, like running around looking for activities. It's like, we just yeah. need a hotel and the club. That's it. And it doesn't matter if it's snowing out. It doesn't matter if it's 120 degrees. It's not going to change my plans. Yes, yes, exactly. And fortunately, the whole city does have AC and, and everything. And <laughs> yeah, they uh, got it dialed in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Except for your it. house. As long as I'm not performing <laughs> in your apartment, I'll be fine. Yes, as long as it's not here, thank goodness it, <laughs> and we got it fixed. But oh man, but real, really excited to have you there. We are also, I think, Stand Up Live is back to full capacity, so it should be oh, that's great. a full house. Yeah, 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 yeah. It'll be fun. That's a that's a that's a really good club, and I haven't been there in a couple of years now, so I'm psyched to go back. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. And I noticed uh, I saw Fortune 
Feimster is going to be playing or or performing on the 30th. Yeah. So she's getting in. Yeah, when it's even is she before me or after me? I guess uh, after. After okay, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I just uh, I just wrapped up the radio show with her a couple minutes ago. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, love. By the way, speaking of which, lovely show. What a joke with Papa and Fortune. Where yeah, thanks. Um, two of my favorite comedians, in fact, getting together and talking <laughs> with other comedians uh, about different things that they've going got going on. I was listening to the um, the bit where you guys had Joel McHale on. Uh -huh. um, uh, and talked about his new crime cooking show, true crime cooking show, I believe yeah, it was. Yeah, exactly. He, he hosts every show on television. Yeah, no, that, <laughs> that show was true. great. It it was really a blessing to uh, to have it and be able to continue doing it during the, the whole last 14 months because, you know, we were isolated and, and you weren't seeing all your comedy friends in clubs. So, like, to have mm -hmm. these conversations with comedians every single day was like, yeah, you know, we're going to look back on it and realize it, it was more than just doing a show. Like, I think it, Kate, it really, truly helped keep our sanity. Oh, that I, I can definitely see that because there yeah. have been points where I was just itching for a work meeting on Zoom because I'm like, <laughs> I need to see other faces. This is yeah, uh, it's getting dreary. Something. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, and comedians, you know, they would come on and just have a good, pers a unique perspective from wherever they were around the world with what was going on and it, it was uh yeah it was really great it was definitely definitely refreshing except for oh. uh, joel McHale, of course <laughs> <laughs> demanding fortune turns on her little neon lights getting up trying to <laughs> make ready. a little shower scene <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> Oh, that's great. And then and and speaking of an, another show that you also have breaking bread with mm -hmm. Tom Papa with Papa, where you've got some incredible guests there as well. I know Joe Rogan, Bill Burr, I just recently was listening to the one with uh, Duncan Trussell, uh, oh, yeah. where I was left salivating, not just over the delicious conversation, but the blueberry scone that you had that you had said you had made. Yeah, and yeah. It's yeah. just such a beautiful blend of not just conversation, but talking with people about the type of food that they eat. I know um, Tig Notaro, she was talking about having kind of a vegan lifestyle and how that really helped her with a lot of chronic pain. Yeah. Um, other times, I believe Jackie Cation was just talking about some really good mac and cheese. <laughs> I know. Yeah, exactly. It is pretty funny to see how everybody, I mean, you, you realize it's such an intimate thing you know, food, it's like, not just what they're doing now, it, you know, has a huge impact on you of, of making you feel good or like in Tig's situation, like trying to dial it in and finding out, finding something that, you know, we're like these little chemistry sets and like you just add a little bit of something, it changes your mood, it changes what you are, it changes your attitude. And then you take it back to when you start as a kid and when it was out of your hands and who was feeding you? What what was that relationship? Like, who yeah. was the important person that made you feel okay when you were homesick from school? And who was who was making your favorite thing on your birthday? And all those kind yeah. of things, they're, they, it's surprisingly uh, deep. And for a podcast, it's kind of like this key. It's like you just kind of start those conversations and it opens everything up. And everybody mm -hmm. like becomes a little bit more, um, a little more forthcoming, a little more vulnerable. And uh, mm -hmm. and then, you know, you mix it in with comedy and it's like, yeah, I really have a good time doing that. Oh, and I have a good time listening and watching. It's oh, a, cool. a fantastic show. And it just brings me back to where sometimes I'll think, oh, I've eaten that or I like that. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah. <laughs> and it, it was making me think, too, when I was reading your your book where you were talking about how your grandma um, you would go over to her house and she had tons of grandkids, but somehow she was able to take a can of tomato sauce and slap together <laughs> yeah. a, a full meal. And it just reminds yeah. me of my grandma too, where she would, the gnocchi, oh man, she'd make lasagna just seemingly yeah. out of scratch for all her, all of her grandkids. And amazing. The, yeah. They almost like, as a kid, you have no clue what they're doing. So it seems like magic. It's like <laughs> my grandmother is a magician. She's <laughs> literally like a warlock how is she doing all of this <laughs> how is she making all this for all of these people it's insane <laughs> i always feel like i should include more we're trying to dial it in but like when we do like the blueberry yeah. scones or something and we like figure out something like we should post 
the recipe for it and give people like a little more info on it. Oh, yeah, that's a fantastic idea. Because I was is it? I don't. I'm not sure if people just want to hear about it or would they be interested in actually making it. Here's what I because I, I wanted a blueberry scone, so uh -huh. I don't know if you need to partner with a local blueberry scone company or what you need to do because people are wanting they're left wanting to eat right. the blueberry scone so whether it's they're going to make it or drive to their nearest pastry shop i think yeah. there's something yeah. there's some follow-up there that's needed fortune yeah. was telling me today she she doesn't like blueberry scones because she doesn't really like berries and oh. then said but the scone that she really likes is cranberry scones i'm like that's a berry <laughs> <laughs> How's that not still? <laughs> so I've got to try and figure that one out and try and make it for her. Oh, man. I feel like the berries really add the moistness to the scone, whereas otherwise a regular one, I, yeah. I think you can make it not dry, but it's No, I know. Difficult. I had Kira Sultanovich on and, and I yeah. was talking about scones. And she was just angry about scones, about how dry they are and how awful they are. And it was like, you haven't had the right one. You're right. I mean, it really is the moisture from that fruit from those. Mm -hmm. It's like you actually have to dial down how much water you're putting in because you have to allow for all the moisture that's going to come out of that. The, I mean, those scones, those blueberry scones that I made were so insanely good that wow. uh, I was like, Kira has no idea what she's talking about. <laughs> but she's Russian. <laughs> They're used to hard, cold cakes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The harder, the better. Oh, man. Well, that is incredible. And um, I was going to talk about too um, the I lost my train of thought. Oh, you're you're um, coming to Phoenix and your material. I know that the last special you had was you're doing great. Was it also was that special in Montclair, New Jersey? It was in Newark, New Jersey. Oh, Newark, New Jersey. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Newark, the performing arts center that they have in Newark. Oh, okay. It's part, it's part of this, this, uh, you know, Newark is, uh, uh, a lot of history to it. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, it was a, it was a huge manufacturing, uh, center of New Jersey. It was like, I think the biggest city in New Jersey. And, um, and then, you know, went through a lot of years of corruption and really kind of fell apart. Uh, but it has these bones, these great bones to it and a lot of poverty, a lot of trouble. And now they're starting to bring it back and they were always desperately trying i mean it makes no sense that you can be that close to new york and be like a train ride away yeah and that it shouldn't still be like this shining light and i think mm -hmm. it probably will get back to that at some point but you know there's a lot mm -hmm. of work to be done in new jersey politicians are notoriously corrupt but there's <laughs> but that um performing at art center is part of this downtown and that is really kind of like it's it's it has some roots to it and it's mm -hmm. they're starting to attract all these great things so i figured let me do the special from there i'm from jersey let me let me uh kind of like use my special as like a little bit of a a little marker just for people to see like exactly what's going on in that town oh i love that i love that yeah. and i my wife and i uh, we lived in New Jersey for about five years. She's from Brazil. I'm from Arizona. So I guess we met somewhere in the middle. Uh -huh. um, but but we lived in Elizabeth, New Jersey, oh, yeah. which is right next to Newark for about five years. Yeah. Not, wouldn't recommend Elizabeth. It's not the safest yeah, place. Yeah, not that in great. The world. No. Yeah. But. It's really, it's, it's, it's a, it, there's all of these great, great cities in mm. New Jersey and just Passaic and Patterson, Elizabeth. Uh, Trenton, um, and they were all such great family places, and they've all just fallen yeah. apart. Like, like it does not make sense that you can be that close to New York City and have these problems. It's like, but they're yeah. so deep. It's been decades now of just troubles. So it's like, it will pull out of it, but I think it's going to take more decades before they can kind of figure it out and, and get on their feet. Yeah, it's it's a really interesting. I'm curious how it is now because we had moved out of there, I think, 2018. Mm -hmm. um, and we had also seen because we both worked in Manhattan. So we took the train and I think rent was cheap there. Yeah. But then they started making these apartments right next to the train station. So now it, it just became more and more expensive, even farther and farther out. I know Brooklyn also it became uh -huh. really expensive. So people were moving um, east. 
I believe. Mm -hmm. And, and um, it's also interesting to see how some places are getting nicer. Some places are staying yeah. awful. And then, yeah. um, yeah, it's just really interesting. Yeah. It's a, it's such a puzzle. I mean, you see it everywhere. We were just talking about um, upstate New York and the same thing. Like you've got Syracuse and Rochester and mm -hmm. Buffalo is probably better off, but you have mm -hmm. all these, you know, and, and all the rust belt and go through Pennsylvania and Ohio. And it's like, these places that were just built on manufacturing and they were just in the, the, and once that got ripped out, you're just left with these shells, but you yeah. see like, what's going to be the future. What's going to be the thing that comes in and like saves a town, like, like Syracuse, like what's the tech, what's the thing that's going to give people jobs and enable you to raise a family. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, it'll be really interesting. I'm, I'm not smart enough to, to figure out how it's going to happen. But you know, it, it, that is such an interesting point. And one of the things that I just thought of was it could also be nothing changes there at all, except now that we're able to work remotely, mm -hmm. maybe people are just looking for that refuge where they're like, Hey, look, I can technically yeah. my, my company's in Silicon Valley, but I'm going to go to Syracuse or I'm going to go here and yeah. just live in a cabin and not do it and <laughs> work from yeah, home. Maybe. So yeah, maybe, maybe these places don't come back. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Didn't mean to add a dreary ending to it, but I mean, hopefully yeah, but it'll... No, but, I, but it is very interesting because I tour around a lot and it's, and uh -huh. it's, it's a common thing in every state. It's like you have these places that are rebounding and they're youthful and they're just, yeah. you know, and they work. And then you have these other spots where it's just not. And now we have like this crazy homeless thing in every state, like every, every state I go to, there's just these tent communities and it just feels like we're at this, we're, we're at a moment of change for sure. Like we're definitely people are like you said, like people are working remotely, like that thing that mm -hmm. happened to us is real. Like people are reevaluating. Well, what is a life? How can I live a life and where can I live a life? And it's pretty inspiring. You know, some of it's pretty fraught, but some of it's inspiring, but it's very common. Like literally yeah. I've tried, I've toured in the last several months. I've been to Omaha I was in um, Kansas City. I was in uh, Portland, and mm -hmm. like it's you could almost be in the same place in all of these different areas. They all have they're all kind of like okay, you know, where are we gonna go? Is it are we, and hopefully young people will kind of figure it out and make it something great. But mm -hmm. we definitely mm -hmm. it seems like it's it's definitely this thing has kind of opened up this opportunity. Uh, for everybody it's like maybe we don't have to play by all those old rules and those old rules weren't really working for a lot of those towns yeah yeah no that's very true that's very true and I, one of the cool things my wife and i've been working from home too and one cool thing has been we have been able to cook a little bit together and my wife being from brazil uh, has made some delicious brazilian nice. treats and delicacies where uh the, the cheese bread i don't know if you've uh -huh. part okay it's oh delicious cool. I don't know, like a unique to Brazil. Yes, yes, they have. Um, it, it's with yucca flour, I believe, uh -huh. and there it's. I don't know why, but it's kind of like spaghetti. They didn't really translate it, where it's called uh -huh. pão de queijo, uh -huh. and and it's this uh, yucca flour with this. I think there's a specific Brazilian cheese along with Parmesan and oh maybe one other cheese. But right. oh boy. It, what you do is you actually cut it. It's a little ball you cut it in half and then you put more cheese. It's like this spreadable, <laughs> almost like the Philadelphia cream cheese, but you put uh -huh. that on and then you shove it in your mouth. Oh my and God. Oh, it's, and, sh and she's good at making this. She's yes. She's wow. amazing at making it. Well, yeah. You, you married well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's real. That was the key to love right there was <laughs> yeah. the belly. Cause yeah. The try and leave. <laughs> 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 uh so I, I one other thing i was going to ask too was i i know that and i had listened to one of the most recent times you were on joe rogan and i think you'd been on like 18 times um but th <laughs> this this most recent time you were talking about one of the things in the pandemic and i know that you were talking about a saving grace also being your show with fortune mm. was uh another thing was creating a routine for mm -hmm. things and and being able to wake up, meditate, have breakfast and do reach research for the show, do the show um, and, yeah. and work out 
and, and then do some either do spots if you could or do some creative writing mm -hmm. now that things have kind of lifted ha have you been able to still hold on to that routine are you slowly letting go is it changing uh, yeah i was actually thinking about it the other day it's uh because i'm going out it, the, the early part of it is holding and you know in the beginning it was structure yeah. for the structure's sake because yeah. you had to if everything if, if everything's too adrift you know we're not good with that human beings we kind of like <laughs> yes. you get depressed or you just kind of wander and do nothing and who knows uh yeah. so but yeah like keeping the, the structure of the morning show through the exercise mm -hmm. portion definitely has hold is holding but now like i'm working right. on the third book and that has that was built into that routine in place of going out and doing stand-up because you couldn't do stand-up so whenever mm -hmm. i would be rolling out to go do something at the comedy store i would just go into my office and use that time to to write and now that i'm going out and doing spots it's uh it's it's messing with the routine the routine from four <laughs> o'clock on is now a little it's it's you can feel it starting to uh to wobble mm -hmm. so i've got it because i mean when you have a when you have a book you have so much writing that has to be done and traditionally i would do that in the morning but now with this radio show that can't happen so mm. and without having structure for that uh a lot of times that won't get done so you i have to kind of build it in and there's two ways to go at it either you just do it any chance you get just mm -hmm. whenever there's a moment you just know that that is your main thing that you have to do but that it can end up getting that has problems because then somebody asks you to pick somebody up or you have to go meet someone yeah. or eat dinner or whatever uh so i think i'm going to have to plot it out like almost like a workout routine It'll be like no the monday i write early late in the afternoon and then tuesday i do it at six but keep it somewhat in the same area so because there is a trick to uh there is a trick to doing it like almost the same time of day like you kind of you're mm -hmm. you're just kind of trained you know like your brain without even knowing it you're just kind of like a mule you just <laughs> someone just puts a <laughs> rope around your neck and leads you to your work area and that's <laughs> you just show up and Sometimes you'll do good work and sometimes you won't, but it's not really up to you. You just have to get right. You just have right. to go into the thing. Just so, sit down, put the oats, put the muzzle of oats in there and just crack away. Yeah, at it. <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. But uh, you can tell from that long answer that I haven't solved it yet. It's definitely on my mind. It's like, okay, the routine is being broken apart because of our freedom, our newfound freedom. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, it'll probably be end up being better because we have perspective and it's, you know, our, all our brains are healthier, get going out and seeing each other and doing all the stuff that we want to do. Uh -huh. So ultimately, I think it'll be better, but I've got to really dial it in or the work actually won't get done. Oh, man. And, and I'm really excited about the third book. I'd heard you talk about it a little bit before, but how far are you? Uh, in, in uh, almost done or? It depends on how rough I am in my, on my, uh, on my self like sometimes i look at i'm like i'm doing pretty good and then i'll go back and read through stuff and be like oh this is all garbage we have a long way to go <laughs> so oh, no. there's enough bones there i think where i'm i'm in a, i'm heading in the right direction but uh it is a long way to go um have you hammered out a title yet or is that still something no not yet there's a couple in play but you know it, it start you have this idea of what you're of where you're headed but you, I, you have to kind of leave it open for interpretation and let it kind of, kind of, not to sound corny, but have it tell you what it's going to be ultimately. You know, mm. it, it tends to, different things start to happen and different ideas start to emerge. And then I don't think any time when I've had a title for that or stand up that it's actually held. It's very rare. The idea that you have uh -huh. when you start out and what it ends up being are always a little different so interesting yeah so i'm not sure i'm not sure where it's at yet I, it's too early to it's not worthy of a title yet <laughs> <laughs> very nice I, I, one yeah. other question i was going to ask was you're doing great the book and the special was that mm -hmm. intended to be the same name or even have the same theme when you started out writing um, in no it really didn't but uh that became 
that really just became something that, uh, that the audience was responding to in such a strong way that they were so grateful to be told that at the time it was just about running around and living your life and that nobody stops yeah. to realize that we always think of what's ahead and we always think that we're not doing enough because we haven't gotten there yet. And it was no, take a beat, look at your life and realize you're already there. You're, you're doing great. This is it. This is your life. Like there is no like yeah. big finish line and big triumphant moment. Like take stock in what your life is and, and you're doing great. And yeah. when audiences would hear that, they would literally come up after the show and, and thank me and say, you know, nobody ever says that. And especially parents, you know, like nobody yeah. ever, I just, I needed to hear it. It was like a relief to hear it. And it, it just was satisfying something that we were seemed to the audiences were seemed to seem to have universally been feeling. So then it almost became this mantra. So that's why the book and the, and the special, as they were both coming out similar times, it was like, well, let's just keep it all heading in that same direction. Even though there's the book of course is deeper and you can go off in yeah. different directions. It was, uh, uh, it was definitely on theme. I just felt like this was the kind of the moment for, for that message in both, both medium. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I have to say it really aged well, um, because I remember I saw the special twice. My wife and I saw it when it first came out or maybe a little bit after, and then mm -hmm. two weeks ago as well. And I uh -huh. was, I, I was reading the book alongside it and I was, I had the pleasure of having your voice in my head as <laughs> I was reading it, so it made it really special. But it also, that message is just so good, especially in these times where it's like, mm. okay, relax, you're doing great. Have some cheese once in a while, uh, you know, have some coffee, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's it's fine. There's, yeah, we live in a great time. Just stop and appreciate it once in a while. Yeah, and, and it's easy uh, to be hopeful when things are going well. It's it's very easy yeah. to, to, to feel good about yourself and be hopeful, but it's when, things start falling apart around you. And we all kind of, we all had that, that a common falling apart that it's like, those are the trickier moments, but it's actually more important. It's actually, that is when you should be trying to drum up some optimism for yourself mm -hmm. because it keep, it helps you carry on and puts things in perspective. You know, I was talking to someone yesterday and they were talking about how they were talking with their grandfather, how 2020 was the worst year ever. And he was like, he was like a kid during the Korean War. He's like, mm, that year when, you know, our village was on fire and we had to leave the country, that was probably worse. <sighs> and if you talk to older people, you know, sitting at home with your internet on, you know, barring like sickness that got to your family, it was like, you know, everything's, yeah. there's, you have to have perspective on, on everything. It's never easy. But that's okay, you know. You are you, if if take some stock, take care of the people around you, and you probably are doing pretty great. That's excellent. Yeah, I mean, for me, a very fortunate. All my family is safe and sound. The worst thing I have to kick is a newfound addic addiction to TikTok. But other than that, I mean, <laughs> yeah. they, maybe I mean maybe shed a couple pounds, but really, yeah, it's, it's uh, it, yeah, keep eating those cheese bad. balls. <laughs> 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 uh all right well um tom this has been awesome so far we're gonna dive in and give some advice with okay. some questions from the reddit advice column but first I, I like to get us nice and inspired with an inspirational quote so i've got one here but i like to ask my guests if there are any inspirational quotes that they cling to when they're having a tough time or um, they're not feeling motivated so do you have any tom that that you're top of mind mm. Are you a quote guy? Yeah, I do like them. I can never remember them though. Um, Same. Wait, there was one. Let me see. Hold on a second. Maybe that's why people tattoo them on their bodies, just because they're like, yeah, they're not. Oh, that's it. They're not so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I had a couple, but I. If you don't have one, that's okay. We you can... go, and I'll look it up as you go. All right, that sounds perfect. So the one that I have, it's actually not by any scholar, doctor, philosopher. Mm -hmm. It's by a robot. 
and its its name is Inspirobot. <laughs> and so what it does is its main purpose is it uses AI, and I think it dives deep into ancient scholarly works, maybe the Torah, um, Shakespeare. Uh, yeah. The robot Ninja. does it like what I mean, it like it calls all those. I, I believe it does, and and it just yeah. mashes all those words together for a beautiful inspirational quote. And what is it? All right, you're so this week. Inspirebot says, finding wisdom is not a question of when, but how high. And that's it. That's the whole quote. Say it again. <laughs> finding <laughs> wisdom is not a question of when, but how high. I think this might be I think a that cannabis robot's confused. inspired. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> Finding was when, but how high? No. <laughs> I think this I robot just I wants think us that all robot, numb. It sounds like he stole from a couple different things. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one. This isn't an inspiring quote. Oh. But it's by a human being. Okay. That, that's a step up from mine. That's good. <laughs> this is Amos Oz, who's this uh, great Israeli writer. And this is how this was a good thing for... Uh, me to keep in mind and i always paraphrase it but this is what he actually said mm -hmm. he said uh now i think of my work as a writer as that of a shopkeeper it is my job to open up in the morning sit and wait for customers if i get some it's a blessed morning if not well i'm still doing my job so the guilt has gone and i try to stick to my shopkeeper's routine Right. That's Ooh. similar to what we were talking about before. And I really do see it that way. It's like that once I got once I heard this, that you are like a shopkeeper. It's not your job mm -hmm. to be inspired and and wait for these great moments and feel good and feel like the way that you want to feel when you're working. Mm -hmm. That's that's all that none of that means anything. It just your real job is to, as the shopkeeper is to sit at the desk with whatever you write with. That's your job. And that's how you get it all done. I couldn't have put that any more be more beautifully. I feel like that really tied together the episode as well, talking about gratitude, talking about you know your job is just to to be there. You know why? Because purpose. it was a human being that did it, <laughs> not a stupid robot. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, well, beautiful. Thank you for sharing that, Tom. We've just got two questions here that we're going to answer and then we'll bid each other adieu. This first one is from the Reddit advice column. It says, how to become a hot guy from a cute one. I know this sounds like a dumb question. Girls these days usually like hot guys. So how to turn myself into a hot guy? I'm called a cute guy from girls, but not a single person have addressed me as a hot guy. They usually say, you're cute. And that's it. Should I change my style? Do girls really like guys with chains and earrings and curtain hairstyles? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so what's his question that he wants to be? Should he try? Or I, I, I don't. Yeah, I think he just wants to be he's a cute guy, but he wants to be a hot guy. I'm imagining he's nowhere near our age where uh, I think no, he might be in the no, formative. No, he still thinks it matters. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, you can't do anything about that. <laughs> you're doomed. Yeah, yeah. Just ride what you got. There, that's it. You're not. You're not going to be the hot guy. There's no way. I mean, I yeah. When I was that age, I was yeah. There was. You'd see your friends that were that way, and those kind of women were attracted to him, and it was a powerful thing. And but he just had it. Had it since he was four and that's just what they've got and they just get to use it and you on the other hand with your being cute you have to unfortunately uh learn some jokes and read some books <laughs> <laughs> and, and i think be grateful too because being the cute guy is at least you're not the ugly guy or like the mole guy because no, i think good point Really good yeah, point. Yeah. And you're going to actually, you're going to attract people that you want to spend more time with. The hot guy always gets crazy people. Oh, yeah, that's true. I, th I think there's a curve out there somewhere that's like the more attractive you are, the more crazy you are, too. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so consider yourself lucky and you're off the hook. You don't even have to try. Beautiful. Wonderfully answered. Uh, <laughs> all right. We've got this last question. It says, uh, 
female 23, I have hay fever. This means I have to keep the windows closed at night so I don't become more ill. My partner can't sleep without the window being open, so he has gone to sleep in the other room. This makes me feel so disconnected to him since I worry he may end up preferring it over sleeping with me. What do I do? Insist he comes back or just suck it up and sleep alone? Oh, um, yeah, maybe invest in a um, in some Claritin. Maybe... Uh... <laughs> Try and fix your hay fever. I, I, this might be a dumb question, but I don't fully know what hay fever is. Is that a really? That's the, that's the, that's the allergies caused by trees and pollen. And oh, plants. so it's seasonal. Oh, so it's technically not like a fever. No. So if she keeps the window open, she's getting the air from her neighborhood in and it's making her sneeze. Oh, uh, no, I see. I see. Yeah. It sounds like she's being a bit of a baby. That's what I really want. If she really wants to come in, hay fever, you can take some stuff to get through the heavy periods. (laughs) And then just, and if you can't take it, then once in a while, sleep separately. If you're young, if you're young, you should be sleeping with each other. If you're, if she was over 40, I would say, go sleep in the other room and consider yourself lucky. (laughs) (laughs) You, you know, I, I was actually remembering that episode with Joel McHale of, of uh, What a Joke with Pop and Fortune, where you were talking about you and your wife sometimes sleep, sleeping separately, you sleep a little better. Was yes. it 40s when you yes. ended up? Anyone okay. over 40 is going to have a 50-50 chance of getting a good night's sleep on their own. And then you have two of those people in one bed. It's, you know, why even turn out the lights? <laughs> <laughs> Do, now does your wife think the same does she feel more comfortable sleeping alone or does she like no. she's still a snuggler she would rather me be there and and um uh, be miserable than be apart <laughs> my wife is the same and, and it's we haven't gone into different rooms yet but i do try i snuggle her until she gently lulls to sleep and then <laughs> i try and turn around but to show her i care i leave the pinky out on that end and i'll hold her leg or something like that just right. to know i'm there just a little contact yeah yeah yeah, exactly. yeah but once in a while someone's gonna leave someone's gonna get just hit their breaking point grab a pillow and kick the other one and go <laughs> so <laughs> yeah it's, it's i think rough. if we just all acknowledge that that's going to happen eventually i think lives will be a lot better because it's yes. not it's you not a big deal. hatch no it's not a big deal my friends have a they call it a sleep divorce and they <laughs> they love each other immensely, but they had a sleep divorce. So they sleep in other rooms and they say that they've never been happier in their relationship. So, you know. It, it makes total sense to me. If, if my wife, while we were eating breakfast and I was mid sentence and she went into another room and was like, this mm. is so much better. I would think that's trouble. But if we're both in REM cycle sleep, having separate dreams, I mm-hmm. don't see why the sleeping no. together is <laughs> yeah. necessary. It's a mess. Just eat some yeah. edibles, have some wine, and hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> Sound advice that we will leave for the final note. Tom, thank you so much for joining the podcast. I also wanted to ask, uh, what have you got going on? What would you like to plug? Where can people follow you? Uh, go to TomPapa.com. My tour is up now. I've got a, it's the, the official tour starts off when I'm in Vegas on July 30th at the win and, uh, and people can get tickets for that. And also Tom Papa.com leads you to the breaking bread podcast and the specials and all the other rest of it. Oh, amazing. All right. Well, thank you so much, Tom. And uh, thank you. It was we'll, fun. Yes. Can't wait to see you in Phoenix. Yeah, it'll be fun coming awesome. up only a couple of weeks away. Yes. Yes. And tickets are all of the links are going to be in the show notes. So everyone can find, everything you can just Ruby. click right there doesn't matter right. how high you are perfect <laughs> come say hello yeah exactly all right, all right. well take care tom thanks again take it easy oh man and that's the episode everybody what a treat for me and i hope a treat for you you listened all the way through so if it's not shame on you or maybe you're just a masochist and you like pain so either way congrats you did it and if you haven't please subscribe leave a review and follow me on Instagram at a comedy advice podcast. All the links are in the show notes to follow Tom as well. See him live 
at the stem 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 cell research nope he's not going to be there maybe he will i haven't talked to him about it yet but at stand up live in phoenix he'll be there and or tompapa.com for all the tour dates thank you guys so much you guys are my little brownies because you're just so decadent gooch smooch mwah, 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 mwah.